Okay, in this video, I am going to give you guys a brief overview of what Calculus 1 is all about. Well, maybe, what do we do in Calculus 1? Here we go. Calculus. A lot of people tell you it's just a study of changes, and I agree with that. And here are two main topics of calculus. The first one is called the differentiation, and the second one is called the integration. Both of them are derived from the concept of limit. So from limit, you can get differentiation, and from limit, you can get integration, right? And of course, in order for us to study calculus, we need to know some tools. One of the tools is, of course, algebra. So let's talk about algebra first right here. One of the things that we used to do is to find the slope of a line. Given two points on the line, x1, y1, x2, y2, here is the slope formula for this line, right? So I guess you guys have seen this many times in the past. And now let's get into the calculus version of that question. Once again, in calculus, it's pretty much a study of changes, and we talk about functions pretty much all the time in calculus because we use functions to describe changes. So suppose we're given the graph of a function right here, y is equal to f of x. Here is the deal. What we're going to do is, suppose I'm just going to pick a point on the graph, on the curve right here. And what we are going to do is, we are going to maybe just bring a straight edge, or maybe a ruler, and you are just going to gently touch the curve right here and form, of, and form a tangent line, right? So it's just a line that touches the graph right here. And I'm just going to draw that for you guys. Uh, hopefully I can draw, okay. So this is meant to be a straight line. So this line touches this curve right here at this point. So maybe you do know the coordinate of this point. And now here's a question. This is a line, so of course it also has the slope, right? It should have the slope as well. It should have the slope as well. But how can we find the slope of this line though? Because this time we only have one point. So now the question is, how can we find the slope of this line. And once again, this line is called the tangent line. How can we find the slope of tangent line? So this is the question mark. This right here, it's definitely so much harder than that because this formula requires two points, right? But now we only have one. And now the question is, if this if, is this even possible? Of course it is, otherwise we wouldn't be able to continue from this point on, right? So I'm just going to pause it right here. We will take some time to study differentiation. We will study some perhaps new tools or new theory on how we can find the slope of the tangent line in this situation. And of course, there are also situations that we cannot draw a tangent line, or maybe the slope of the tangent line is not defined. So that's the question I'm going to leave to you guys for now. And the second main concept is the integration. And of course, let's relate to the things that we have done in the past, namely geometry. In geometry, what do we do? Well, study shapes, of course. And one of the topics that we did in geometry is to find the area. And right here, this is one of the easiest shapes to study. We have a rectangle right here. I know I just labeled that as height and base. Usually people label this as the length and the width, but hopefully that doesn't bother you too much. From here, the area of this rectangle is simply base times height. That's it. Easy. And of course, there are other geometrical shapes that you guys have seen in the past. For example, you have a circle with radius r. And in this case, how can we find the area of the circle? I know people are going to tell me area is equal to pi r squared. Once again, it's pretty easy. But now I do have a question for you guys right here. How did we come up with this formula? How did we come up with the pi? Why is this 3.14 something times r squared? How do we know that? Well, this right here, in fact, it's not easy to prove. Um, but however, if you look at this shape right here, rectangle, well, maybe I will give you guys another example. Maybe we have a triangle right here, for example. So if I have a triangle like this, I have a base, 
and maybe I will give you the height right here as well. This right here, of course, we have the area formula, which is 1 half base times height. This is also pretty easy. Well, how can we find the, how can we prove the formula for the area of a triangle? Very, very easy. You can just move this around and you can just say it's just half of the square. That's why we have the half. That's pretty straightforward. And if you would like, you can just imagine you have a rectangle and then just cut into half. You do get the triangle, right? And of course, you can also have the trapezoid, one half base one plus base two in the parentheses and then times the height. And that's also pretty straightforward to prove. And I just want to make a point that these formulas are easy to see because the shapes right here, they are all formed by straight lines. So it's pretty easy to talk about the area of formulas right here. And the moment that you have a curve, right? This shape is with curve, which is a circle. It's not so easy to argue that the area is equal to pi times r squared, where pi is about 3.1415, something, something, something. Anyway, let's come back to integration. Once again, I'm given a curve. And this time though, I still also want to ask the area question, but this is the calculus version. Suppose I want to start with some point, I'll just say point A, maybe right here, and then I want to go up to point B, maybe up to here, right? And you see that from here to here, we form a region. And if I just look at this region, I can ask, I can ask what is the area of this region. And usually people will say this is the area under the curve. And of course, because here we have a curve right here, we don't really have a nice formula to find the area right here. You can imagine this is like a piece of toast, if you would like, uh, just like a piece of toast that you guys eat for breakfast. How can you find the area of that? This is not easy at all because you have the curve right here. Unless your toast is a perfect rectangle, then you can just do base times height. This is the easy version, this is not. And how can we solve this? Of course, we can solve it by using what we call integration. And of course, you will have to wait till later on to study the tools, the techniques, the theory, and the way we approach these kind of things in order to understand fully. But for now, I'm going to leave this to you guys to think about if you haven't seen these kind of things in the past. Lastly, I invite you guys to look at this picture at this picture one more time. This is the slope of a tangent line. This right here is the area under the curve a line, and a region. Let me ask you guys this. Do you think that there is some kind of connection between this question and that question? Line and area, line and region. Well, it doesn't seem like it, right? Because this shape and that shape, they of course look totally different. Um, yeah, but the wonderful thing is that there is a nice connection between differentiation and integration. In another word, if today you know differentiation, then that means you should be able to study integration pretty easily. Likewise, in order for you to study integration, maybe you should know differentiation first, one or the other. And this connection is what we call the fundamental theorem of calculus, FTC. Once again, fundamental theorem of calculus. And in a Calculus 1 course, this is pretty much the most exciting part. We see the connection between differentiation and integration. And of course, there are tons of applications of differentiation and also integration. And you guys will just have to have the patience and have the momentum, have the uh, guts to take the class. And um, in my Calculus 1 course, I usually break down into four parts. The first part is, of course, how to deal with limits, what I just call that belief in your limits. And then the second part is the differentiation techniques. And then the third part is all the applications with differentiation, such as related rate and optimizations. And lastly, we'll end the course with integration. And of course, we also see the connection between differentiation and integration by using the fundamental theorem of calculus. And later on, you are going to really see that how we can use the concepts from the past to help us solve new questions. 
And I think that's one of the reasons why that a lot of students find calculus to be really difficult. Because in order for you to be good at calculus, you have to know your algebra really well, and also geometry, also trick. Pretty much anything that you have done in the past, prior to your Calculus 1 class. And of course, hopefully, you will continue with your Calculus career, and you take Calculus 2, Calculus 3, and so on, and you will really find the enjoyment and you know, learning this new uh, math, maybe for some of you guys.